Hello everyone, Argon Matrix here, welcoming you to episode 0 of Gaming Millionaire. Now, as you might have guessed from the title, and as the name would imply, this is directly inspired by the game show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and it's effectively the same thing, except this is going to test your knowledge of video game based trivia, and that alone. Because since this is a Let's Play channel, I would assume that many people in my audience would know quite a bit about video games and you've demonstrated that to me through comments and everything, so it's finally time to put that knowledge to the test and see how you do. And this game show is going to be running for 15 weeks, it's going to be a weekly game show going up every Sunday, and basically this layout is going to be the exact same as Who Wants to Be a Millionaire with some minor altercations. There's going to be 15 questions, that stays the same, 5 easy questions, 5 intermediate questions, and 5 difficult questions. And uh, for each question that you get correct, you will get one point. It doesn't matter how difficult the question is, what the difficulty of it is. You will get just one point for each question that you get correct. And the instant that you get one question wrong, that is when your game is over and you have you will keep the amount of points that you've earned. So if you got seven questions right and you get the eighth one wrong, you will have seven points. And these points effectively work as ballots in a draw, because at the end of the 15 weeks, once all 15 contestants have competed and earned however many points each one of, earn, each one of them earns, I will combine all of them and use a random num number generator to pick one of their virtual ballots. You can't see me, but I'm putting that in air quotes because they're not actual ballots. Tee hee. And whoever's ballot gets chosen, they will win the grand prize which I will reveal later on in this video, or you can click the table of contents that's on the screen right now and see what the grand prize is right away, because it's a category down there. And so that's how that's going to work. But to help you along your way answering these questions, it's not going to be solely based on your knowledge, you won't be entirely alone. You will have, akin to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire's Lifeline system, there will be three hints given to you for the duration of your 15 question round. And you can use one hint per question maximum, and once your three hints are up, that's it, and you're on your own from that point. There's no way to earn ex extra hints or anything like that. But each hint will serve the purpose of helping you to find the right answer. Generally the hints will actually help to eliminate wrong answers. Depending on how difficult the hint is to interpret, it could eliminate one, two, or maybe even three answers. Three of the four answers. I failed to mention that. This is actually a multiple choice uh, question based game show, in case you didn't know that already. And, uh, yeah, so if the hint is really difficult to interpret, it might eliminate three choices, because not a lot of people will get the hint, but if it's really easy to understand, then it'll probably only eliminate one choice, because that's just how easy it is, and you just get a free pass with that one. So how do you enter this? How do you become a contestant on one of the 15 rounds in this show? Effectively, all you have to do is leave a comment on the round prior to the one you want to be in. So if you want to be a contestant in round one, you would leave a comment on this video right here, episode zero. And if you want to be a, a contestant in round two, you would leave a comment on round one's video. And uh, the comment can say whatever you want it to say. You can just, you can just comment, but for all I care. And what I'm going to do is take a random number generator and use that to pick one of the comments at random after a certain amount of time. I'll give you a deadline at the end of this video for when you have to have your comment on this video posted by if you want a chance at being a contestant on round one. And once I've used the random number generator, I will find whichever comment that corresponds to. I will message the person and we'll work it all out. And if it turns out that they can't record, then I'll figure something else out at that point. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it, as they say. I don't know who says that anymore, that's an old ass saying, oh my god. So that's how you enter, hopefully that makes sense. And as any game show or anything like this would have it, there are certain rules and regulations that will need to be followed, or certain guidelines at least that you should follow. This one, however, this first one, is a rule. No cheating. No cheating allowed whatsoever. And uh, I guess what would... Uh, qualify as cheating here would just be like googling the answer or using some sort of search engine to find the answer in the middle of your round. And I think it's pretty obvious since I'll be in a Skype call with the person if they're doing that. However, if someone can do it discreetly enough and uh, well then that'll be bad on your conscience. 
conscience. But if I find out that you have cheated, then I reserve the right to disqualify you, disqualify you from the competition, as I was saying there. No, disqualify you from the competition. So, uh, that should give you an incentive not to cheat. But I trust you guys enough. You guys are a pretty awesome audience, if I do say so myself. After all these years, I know you pretty well. But, uh, I still have to say it because I don't know what kind of people I'll get on this show. And kind of an annoying stipulation here is that you're going to have to have a microphone as well as a way to record yourself, like Audacity or Record Pad or something. If, it, if I could have it my way, I wouldn't have that stipulation. I would just let anyone compete, but unfortunately, a microphone will be required in order to like, be in a Skype call with me for me to host your game show round. And uh, you will need to record your own side of the commentary. So that will be a bit of a stipulation. Sorry for anyone who can't meet that requirement, but... uh. There will be some other stuff for you to do later on, as you'll see in the audience interaction part of this introductory video. And uh, these last two are just sort of guidelines that you probably want to follow. Uh, the first one being, you should probably have good sportsmanship. I.e. don't like berate people for their answers or anything, or for what they say or do. And don't say or do anything yourself that could easily be frowned upon by others. And if I find that you do something bad enough, I don't know what exactly that would be. I can't even imagine the kind of things that you would do. But if it's... If I consider it bad enough, I also reserve the right to disqualify you from the competition. If you are entered in the competition. And, um, finally, just as a last little tip, studying for these questions is encouraged because... Even though a lot of the easier questions are pretty intuitive, if you know the first thing about video games, a lot of the more, like intermediate and difficult questions, they are not so intuitive and you will need to study a little bit because not everyone knows everything about every video game. At least I assume that not everyone does. I hope it's not just me that doesn't know everything. Oh no. But uh, I will also offer, for each round, I will offer a study guide for the next round. So in the description of this video, you will find a Google document with a study guide for the round one questions. It's a very vague study guide, just a broad list of topics that you want to cover. So cover as much of those topics as you can if you want to compete. And it, it'll go on like that for the full 15 weeks. So in round one's description there will be a study guide for round two and so on and so forth. Now, the next category I have here is bonus points. Because I didn't think it would be fair, or this, well this will make it more fair essentially, this bonus point system that I have. Because if someone really sucked or got unlucky or something and got the first question wrong, normally that would just give them with zero points and zero chance of winning the draw. But this will at least give everyone a shot because it's impossible to get zero points with this system. So, the first thing here, the first way to get bonus points is for every unused hint you have at the end of your round, whether you won the round or not, you will get one bonus point. So if you have all three of your hints left and you get a question wrong, then you, those three hints will become points added to your score. The second way of getting bonus points is that for any five questions that you answer of a certain difficulty, like if you answer all five easy, medium, or difficult questions, without using any hints for those questions, then you will get a certain amount of bonus points corresponding to the difficulty which you did. So, I know that I didn't really word that the best way I could have, but I'll just give you the example. You will get one bonus point if you answer all five easy questions without using any hints. You will get three bonus points if you answer all the intermediate questions without using any hints. And you will get five bonus points if you answer all the difficult questions without using any hints. And sort of uh, following up on that one, you will get ten bonus points, which is quite a bit in this, uh, in this case, if you answer all 15 questions correctly without using any hints whatsoever, if you have all three hints intact and you win the round, AND WIN! That's redundant. Redid redid redundant. But you will get 10 bonus points for that. And um, the last way to earn bonus points here is that if you get all 15 questions correct, regardless of whether you used hints or not, your total point score for that round will be doubled, which is a really good bonus if you ask me. And doing this, I've done the math for this, the lowest possible score anyone could get would be two points, which is if they use a hint on their first question, and then they get that question wrong, then their last two, two hints that they haven't used will still go to those points. 
and the highest possible score, which is effectively answering all 15 questions without using any hints, is 74 points. So, aim, aim high. I don't expect anyone to get that high of a score, but you can take that as a challenge if you want. I know how the internet loves their good challenges. Mehehe. <laughs> oh, I don't have the gusto to pull off that voice or anything. God, I'm so stupid. Anyways, let me just move on. I need to conduct this with a sort of air of professionalism here. So, why would you want to enter this? What purpose could this possibly serve? How could this benefit you in any way whatsoever, except maybe getting you like a bit of exposure for your channel or like bragging rights or something? But beyond that, there is an actual factual material prize that you will win if you win this thing overall. And that is, drum roll please, I, I don't have a drum, shit, uh, just bang my face, ow, shit, oh my god, uh, I don't think that worked. Um, the grand prize will be a 32 gigabyte black Wii U console, because in 15 weeks time when this whole thing is said and done, that console will be out, and I will buy the grand winner a Wii U console. I'm not sure if the console itself will come with any games, or if I'll buy you a game at your request. Uh, we'll figure all that out later on when we, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it again. Jeez Louise. So that's that. And if you already have a Wii U system, or if you don't want a Wii U system and you win this whole thing, then uh, we can exchange messages and we'll work out a different prize. But for, that, for now, that is the gr official grand prize, and... I feel that I should probably mention this, just bring this up really quick, is that if you have an issue, if you're uncomfortable sending me like your address or your P.O. box, then I would recommend not entering this contest because uh, for whoever wins, I will need your address or P.O. box or whatever to send you the prize. So if you're not comfortable giving me that, then it could result in an awkward situation where I can't actually send you the prize, and that could be a bit of an issue, because that would sort of negate the whole purpose of this game show in the first place. So, do not enter unless you're comfortable with me having that information, and I promise, I swear on my life, that I will not share that information with anyone else. It'll stay strictly between you and me, and that is a promise I can keep. So, that's that for the contestant portion of the game show. But as any game show would have it, or as a lot of game shows don't seem to have it, actually, from what I've seen recently. Game shows suck nowadays, have you realized that? But, uh, audience interaction. So, even if you don't get to be a contestant on the show, there will be certain things you can do to interact with the show and have fun yourself and, uh, possibly get your name mentioned or whatever. We'll see. <laughs> Not that name mentioning is the be-all, end-all of things here. But there are three things that you're gonna get to do as an audience member. The first one is really pretty trivial, literally actually, is uh, there will be certain questions, like, it's basically like who wants to be a millionaire, where at the commercial breaks they would have certain questions, they would give them to the audience, and then like at the end of the commercial break they would show you the answer. That's essentially gonna be what's happening here, so it's just gonna be a test of your trivia just for fun, as an audience member. And uh, the second audience interaction, which is far more interesting, is that for each episode, I would like to have certain, like, commercial breaks. It's effectively only going to be, like, one commercial per commercial break, with a maximum of two commercial breaks per episode. Anywhere from zero to two commercial breaks, depending on uh, how this is going to work. But for the commercial breaks, I'm not going to be making the commercials myself. You are. That's right. You can make a commercial advertising anything you want. It can be a total joke commercial. It can be a commercial advertising something serious, like a charity or something. It could be a commercial for your channel. It could be whatever you damn well please. But as long as it's good enough, and whether it's good enough is completely subjective to me, if I think it's good enough to put in the show, then I will take it and I will put it in the episode, provided uh, you give me consent to do, to do so, which I would assume you would, or otherwise you wouldn't have made the commercial in the first place. And if you want to make one of these commercials to be in the show, then post it as a video response to the prior round that you want it to be in. So if you want a commercial to be in round one, you would post as a video response to this video. And if you want to be in round two, you would post as a video response to the round one video, and so on and so forth. And the last thing, because as many of you probably know, if you're veterans of my channel or anything, or if you've looked through the archives of my channel, 
you will know that this game show, this Gaming Millionaire thing, is essentially replacing Challenge Sunday, which was discontinued quite a while back, and I always wanted to sort of bring it back deep in the back in, uh, deep in the back of my mind. That doesn't, that's kind of redundant, actually. But I always wanted to sort of bring it back, and I effectively am going to bring it back here with this last audience interaction thing, because at the end of every round, every round of the show, every each of the 15 rounds, there will be a sort of mini episode of Challenge Sunday called Challenge Sunday Reloaded, fair enough, because that's actually more of a Matrix reference than anything else. And it's going to work the exact same way as Challenge Sunday did, so uh, there will be a link to the rules video for Challenge Sunday if you're interested in that. And yeah, so go look, go look into those rules, and if you want to compete in that, by all means do it. You'll have the same sort of prizes, and uh, have fun with that. And I believe that's all I have to say for this video, so if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, I would recommend PMing them to me instead of posting them in the comments, since the comments are sort of the place where contestants are to be decided. But if you really don't want to PM me or something, feel free to post it in the comments and I'll try and re to re reply to it. But uh, I can't guarantee that I will because that could mess up the voting system and, uh, well not the voting system, but the random number generator system. And, yeah. So, if you have any of those, then send them my way. And, uh, as for specific details here, the round one entry deadline, or the time that you have to have your comment posted by on this video if you want to have a chance at being the contestant of round one, is Wednesday, October 3rd, which is basically one and a half weeks from now. And the first round will be posted, hopefully, on Sunday, October 7th, in two weeks. Generally, there will only be a one-week delay between rounds, but since this is the first round, I want to make sure all the kinks are ironed out and everything. So I'm going to give it a two-week gap instead. So look forward to that in two weeks. And that's all I have to say, so for anyone entering, good luck, godspeed, and study hard. And for anyone not entering, I hope you enjoyed the audience interaction and just watching the show in general, so thanks everyone for watching and listening. Good luck and good night.